How do you do, everyone? Welcome back. It's part four, and in this part, get ready because this part has uh, quite a lot of information for you to take in. This whole section is purely dedicated to workflow improvements. We've already done this in part two, and now we're kind of following up after fixing our breaking changes in part three. What we're going to focus on are just minor improvements to your writing because as you're writing documents, you end up repeating yourself a lot. You end up doing the same things quite a bit. So we're going to look at five different modules today that are gonna just help you automate some repetitive tasks within Norg. So buckle up and here we go. The first module I'd like to show you is a very simple one. For some, it's going to be worthless and for some, it's going to be really important. And this is the core.pivot module. The entire idea of the pivot module is that you can convert between different list types with just a single key press. So in our Norg document, let's write a quick list and see it in action. Right, so here's my list with three items and currently it's an unordered list. And what core.pivot allows you to do is it allows you to either toggle or invert the list. And we're gonna get into the differences in a minute. To toggle the type of list, there's an exposed key bind, which is local leader LT. And that stands for list toggle, uh, where local leader is just like the prefix used for, for Neog. So it's Neog list toggle. And if you hover your cursor over the list you'd like to toggle and run the command, the core.pivot module does its thing and now it's an ordered list. And if you run it again, it converts back to an unordered list. Pretty sweet, pretty simple. Uh, but I did also say there's an invert command. And if you run the invert command, it seems on the surface like it does the same thing. The invert command is local leader li or local leader list invert and when you run it it also converts to and from an ordered list so what's the big deal here so lists in norg can actually be merged and mixed together i can actually go down here and i can start writing an ordered list right next to an unordered list now these well, they're adjacent to each other and Norg actually treats these as a single list. Now we can actually prove this by just looking at the syntax tree that Norg generates uh, when looking at your file. And you can view this syntax tree using an inbuilt NeoVim command, if assuming you're running on the latest nightly, I believe. I don't think this isn't stable just yet. The command name is inspect tree and hitting enter, you're going to see the whole tree for your file. Now you can go down here and as you move your cursor, you're going to see different elements of the document highlighted. But as you can see here, there's a top level node called generic list and all of the other nodes underneath are considered children of this big generic list. This includes this unordered item, this unordered item, this one, and also all the ordered items. So this, this, and also this. So notice, if you run list toggle, Pivot is actually only going to look at the first item to determine what to switch to. Uh, so it's gonna see this is an unordered list item, it's gonna convert everything to ordered. So if you're gonna run list toggle, you can see these also remain ordered. And now when you list toggle again, everything gets switched. List inverts, however, it just goes through each one and inverts it like this. So that was the pivot module. Next up, I'd like to show you the promo and itero modules. Starting off with the itero module. Itero allows you to just continue items. By hitting Alt Enter in your terminal instance, it's going to look at what you've been typing already, if it's a list item, for example, and it's going to enter a new line and start a new list item. So showing this off is very simple. I can start writing a list item, list item one, and then when holding Alt and hitting Enter, I immediately get dropped to the second list item. It actually works for every kind of object and it changes its behavior depending on context. So if, for example, I'm inside of a heading, heading one, and then typing some text, if I hit now Alt Enter, it's going to start a new level one heading. And if I enter a second level heading, and I hit Alt Enter, it's also going to start a new level 2 heading. Another thing is it also retains to do status extension. So if I write something with a to do status and I go to the next one, it's going to keep the to do item. And that's it for this module. Just a single key bind, but it does make a difference when you write something. Module numero three is the promo module and you should be doing this already but I recommend you're running on the latest stable New York version. In this case this is 4.0.0 or later because the promo module got rewritten much more stable much better by a great contributor. So what promo does is it either promotes or demotes some object. 
and this object is a nestable object. So this includes stuff like headings, because you can nest headings in headings, uh, lists, and also quotes. And what Promo does is it just allows you to move between the levels very quickly. So if I create a, a level 1 heading with some text underneath, uh, if I now hover over the heading and I use the inbuilt NeoVim operator, uh, the two arrows, like this. Normally what NeoVim would do is it would just indent it, but NeoG overrides these key bindings and it increases the level of the heading. And two greater than symbols again increases the level again, and using the two less than symbols decreases the level. Now note that this key bind works recursively, so if you have a level 2 heading inside and the text underneath this heading, uh, if you promote this level 1 heading, it's also going to promote a level 2 heading underneath and convert it to a level 3 heading. This is usually the preferred behavior, but there are cases where you may want to work non-recursively and only on the current object. So to illustrate this, I'm going to put some text below the level 1 heading. Now with the regular keybinds, it's going to move everything. But if you use the greater than symbol and then you let go of shift, and press the dot key, which on most keyboards should be exactly the same key, uh, it's going to wor work non-recursively. So to type that out, the key bind to promote non-recursively is greater than symbol, then dot. And to demote is the less than symbol and then the comma. And to see this in action, you can see that now only the top heading is indented and the level 2 heading is left untouched. Apart from having normal mode keybinds, you also have access to insert mode keybinds in case you'd like to do things from insert mode. These are also inbuilt keybinds within NeoVim and these are Control T and Control D. Control T usually increases the indentation level and Control D decreases it and NeoG overrides this uh, in case you're in a special situation like on a heading to promote or demote the heading recursively. There's no non-recursive keybind, only recursive for insert mode. Now if I start writing a heading one title and I hit Control T, it's gonna automatically promote the heading. Now one thing to note, uh, TreeSitter, which is the uh, engine that is used to pass NeoG documents, it doesn't always understand incomplete syntax, which means that sometimes the promotion won't work if you're just mid-typing. And the promo module really pulls information from TreeSitter, so if the information is incomplete, then you're not going to get any results. And an example of this is the heading. If you actually write a heading like this, and you don't type anything in the title, and you try hitting Control t nothing is going to happen because the promo module doesn't see the whole picture and doesn't quite understand what you're doing. Running an inspect tree shows us that TreeSitter thinks this is an error with a heading 1 prefix. So whenever you're going to indent, just write out your title first and then promote or demote to your liking. And also one last thing, even though NeoG does override these key bindings for normal text and for everything else, it works exactly like the default NeoVim does. So if I just type in some text here uh, and I try to indent it with Control T, it's going to get indented normally. So it's not a greedy kind of overriding of the key bindings. The special promotion behavior only activates whenever it has to. The fourth thing on today's list is the traverse heading mode. Whenever you have a large file, you usually want to very quickly jump between important sections of the file. And there are two ways to do this, which we'll explore today. The first one is using the traverse heading mode. Newark can actually operate in many different key binding modes, and there are only two available by default. These modes can be changed by running Newark mode and then tab complete. And as you can see, Newark is the first one that shows up. This is the default mode that you enter whenever you launch Newark. And you also have traverse heading, which is a special mode when you want to quickly skim through documents. So to illustrate this, let's write out a few headings. So here's an example file you might have. This is a very small scale example. And what I want you to imagine is that there's a lot of these headings in your file. Now, instead of going up and down by holding J and K, let's enter the traverse heading mode. And now whenever you hit K, Newark is going to jump the heading above. And if you hit J, it's going to go to the heading below. So it overrides the J and K or up or down keys to just move between headings instead of moving between text. To move back, you type Newark mode, Newark, and you're dropped back into the regular NORG mode. So modes are basically like keybind layers, they activate different keybinds depending on the mode you're in. We can actually toggle these modes using a keybind itself, which in this case is local leader MH, or mode heading traversal, to switch to the heading traverse mode, obviously, and uh, local leader MN to switch back to the NORG mode. So that's one way to skim through documents, but the second, and also the last module that I'd like to show off today, is the table of contents module. The TOC 
C module just creates an overview in a side buffer and you can hit enter on any of the entries in the table of contents to jump to the actual location in the file. So back to our very fantastic and practical example over here. To open up the table of contents, you use the neworg toc command and on its own, it's just gonna open the table of contents. However, it can actually operate in three modes. If you hit tab, it can operate in left mode where the TOC is open on the left. It can be opened on the right or instead of showing a different buffer at all, it can send all of the entries to the quick fix list, which we'll also get into. If you run it without anything, by default, New York TOC will respect your split right option, which you can have set in your NeoVim. Split right is by default off, which means your TOC is going to be open on the left. Right, let's run the command and there you go. Very simple, just a table of contents and a link to every single one of your items in the actual file. You can go down and end on any of these lines, you can hit enter and it's going to take you to the line on the right. It also respects changing between files, so if I were to open a upper.morg file which may have some content, it updates in real time. The cool thing you may not know is you can actually change the message on top here by using a macro. Now macros are pretty advanced, they're going to be covered very very far into the series, but now you can get a taste of what it's like. If you go to like somewhere near the top of your document and type .toc, after the .toc macro you can actually write a custom title. And after saving the file, it gets automatically updated to match the title. What .toc will actually do is it will generate a table of contents in your buffer whenever you export to some other file. And the parameters supplied to it just allow you to customize the title, which the TOC module actually respects. And it will also update as you make changes, however it will only refresh whenever you save the buffer. So if I add another heading, it actually won't update until I save and then you see the new entry. One thing you might not want is you might not want this to be open at all times and you might want it to close whenever you hit enter to jump to a target. You can actually do this if you hop on over to the core.qualityoflife.toc module. There is a single configuration option as of now which is close after use. It's set to false by default, but by setting it to true, it's going to close whenever you select an entry. I assume you know how to customize modules. If not, everything is explained in parts 1 and 2, and configuring modules is incredibly easy. So don't be afraid, refresh your knowledge in those parts if you forget about anything, because there is quite a lot of information in these videos to take in, so jumping back and forth between the parts should kind of be a normal thing for you. About the quick fix list though, New York TOC quick fix list uses the inbuilt new of them quick fix list window to populate the entries. Now in case you don't know what the quick fix list is, is it's just a set of kind of links to locations in a buffer and if you've ever used LSP in any of them, if you've ever ran like show references and there are many references to a single variable, uh, new of them would display the quick fix list and you can go through the entries and hit enter on any of the entries to get taken to that location. So that's it for part four. Just a quick recap yet again. If you have lists, you can toggle them with local leader LT or invert them with local leader LI. Toggle collapses mixed list types into a single type, whereas invert respects the different types of lists and inverts them selectively. Whenever you're about to enter a new line, you can hit alt alongside enter to continue the current item that you're writing. If you ever want to promote anything, you use the index operators in NeoVim or the insert mode operators control T and control D. You can quickly move between headings by using the traverse heading mode which is accessed using local leader MH and to return back to the normal mode use local leader MN. To open up a table of contents you run the New York TOC command which opens up a buffer which gets updated every time you save your original document or you may optionally opt for the quick fix list which can be triggered by running the New York TOC QF list command. So that's it for this part part 4, you should at this point be an intermediate wielder of the NORG file format. You can change indentation levels immediately, you can continue lists, you can view tables of content. You're now in a pretty good spot after just 4 episodes. So this is now kind of the end of a sub-series within the actual big series where we are focusing on getting started and getting good at writing just pure NORG markup. However, now we're transitioning onto a new phase where we're going a layer above and we're entering a new layer of abstraction if you want to call it that where we start looking at automation, metadata and just making our lives much easier. I believe last time I did promise the summary module 
all this video over to keep everything consistent and to make kind of like the sub-series thing possible, we're covering the summary module in part 5 which should be available soon. Hope you're having a good day. I never mentioned in the previous videos, however if you really enjoy what I do, there's a GitHub sponsors link in the description. Any donation is really helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in part 5. Ciao!